Again, thank you for being there. Welcome to our, no need to our more developers, but you could instead deliver 10 times more. Uh, my name is Remy. I'm the uh, founder uh, of Engeno, a Quebec uh, software company, uh, where we provide R&D as a service. So what's R&D as a service? We're providing on-demand elastic DevOps teams. Uh, so we do manage for our customers the complete life cycle of product design, uh, technical architecture, TDD, uh, TDD and continuous delivery uh, oriented type of development. And for, I would say more than half of our customers who also manage operations. So I see that we're now 18 people, that's awesome. Uh, uh, we'll start with a, a poll uh, we've seen from the, uh, your emails that most of you seem to be from Quebec. So if <laughs> we'll, we'll do a poll, if we uh, see that everyone speaks French, well, I'll, I'll be switching to French. So I'm with Edward today, who will be managing your comments. Uh, what, what did you say, Ed? <laughs> so we'll, we'll be asking uh, a simple question. So are you uh, a French-speaking or English-speaking attendee? And, and we'll decide... Sorry? For people or uh, English only, so we'll be uh, staying in English. Uh, but uh, you can feel free to ask your questions in French uh, or in the language of your choice. So that being said, uh, the, the, talk aujourd or aujourd the talk today will be, uh, will be discussing the fact that hiring is really difficult. Uh, we see that we see that in, in Quebec. So, for those of you who are in Quebec, uh, that's not a secret. Hiring good people is really uh, a challenge, uh, and because most, well, more than half of our customers are actually in California, they're on the West Coast around uh, San Francisco. Uh, we're told that hiring there is is still more difficult than. Uh, than it is in Quebec. So that's uh, a pain that everybody is feeling. Uh, so we'll be proposing an option, which is to optimize your workforce instead of hiring more people. So uh, I will assume uh, I don't have any comment with regard to the, uh, the quality of the sound or the, the streaming. So I will assume that everything is going, we're doing good. And I see that we're, most, most people who had registered are there. So again, for the latecomers, my name is Remy. I'm really glad to have you with us today. So we'll be discussing today a, a few things. So why do we think that RN is difficult? And again, um, our talk is, is biased by the fact that we're in, in, in IT. So it, we know, though, that it's, it's really difficult for, for anyone. We have people here in Quebec in the manufacturing industry or retail or, or the food industry. They're feeling the same problems. Uh, but we, we do think that it's possible to optimize your workforce. So, and, and we'll share a, a few examples of why we, we think that's possible. Uh, and then, and that's the, uh, the, 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 the main topic from, from the talk, is that we think that on average, it's possible to increase not by 10 or 15% your, your your throughput, but we think that it's, it's possible to increase by a factor of 10 uh, your development team's uh, capabilities. And then, uh, well, 
it, it's not easy, really. So we'll discuss what are those challenges to increasing your, your development throughput, but provide you with, with 10 uh, steps. I, I was about to say 10 easy steps, but they're not really easy, but they, it's possible. And we'll conclude with a, a lessons learned kind of summary and take your questions. So again, uh, I'll try to keep that short, like 30 minutes or so. You're welcome to ask your questions uh, over the talk, during the talk. Ed will relay to me the, the questions and try to, we'll try to answer those uh, at the proper place within the talk. So if you, you ask a question and we do not come to you, uh, come to the question right now, it's because we'll, we'll be uh, answering the question a bit later, but rest assured, we'll be answering all questions. So, uh, I don't see any questions. Let's just start. Why is hiring so difficult in the IT industry? So there are some obvious uh, reasons. Uh, some of them you, you know, like the, the actual shortage of talent. And there, the people are telling me that we're currently missing 30,000 people in the IT industry here in Quebec alone. So shortage of talent uh, makes it hard to, to hire. But more than that is that today, if you think about the, the, the last app you, you, you made or the last platform, it's way more difficult than it was just a few years ago. You have to think about uh, having an awesome user experience. Today, it's, a, it's, a, it's mandatory to, to be on par with, with Facebook and Google. And then uh, you need to think about uh, security, scalability. You have to, uh, to, to manage operations. Uh, it, it's really hard. So you have to, to have above average uh, talent to, uh, to, to make those, those platforms or apps. And the gap between average developers today and good developers is, is, is more than it was 10 years ago. Salaries, uh, the shortage makes it that salaries are exploding. Uh, good developers want to be surrounded by better developers. So just bootstrapping a startup is, is really hard. Uh, people in, the, in HR tell me that on average, 25% of your workforce will leave within the first 12 months really hard to, to tie them down with uh, option grants uh, or whatnot. And uh, you need to be like 6C like Facebook, Apple, uh, Google, or Amazon. So not an easy task. So why do we think that uh, optimizing your workforce is, is, is possible? Well, because we've seen it. So we're really fortunate to be uh, in the Bay Area near San Francisco. And uh, we have access to people, for instance, at Netflix. So I was there a few years ago in their new campus and saw that the, the team that manages all the data layers, so the managing the data, managing the, the recommendation engine, uh, managing the apps, so managing a a cluster of Cassandra databases uh, with 25,000 nodes uh, well required only 11 engineers. Uh, I was, uh, it was, it, it, they had to manage security, build tools, they had to, to, to build apps, and there were just 11 people. Uh, if uh, some of you know of Basecamp, it's a project management, one of the most popular project management platform, they have 3 million accounts, company accounts, so 
uh, and they make 25 million in revenue, yearly revenues, and it's all managed by 50 people. Of that, there are sales, support, uh, marketing, and they may be like 20 developers. Uh, then you have platforms like TopTal and 10 times that their claim is that they, they'll provide you with freelancers that are at least 10 times better than the average developer. So they're, they're building a business model on the, the 10 time factor. And it's backed by research that says that if you measure a good developer, on average, he may be 20 times better, deliver 20 times better value than your average developer. Uh, and we're, as part of our business, we're mostly a, oh, uh, we have a question. So uh, yeah, Basecamp is cool and all their people working remotely from all over the world also. It's really cool. Uh, if you have any questions, Amy will answer them. That's what I just did. Okay, so I was saying that we're mostly a software development shop, but we do technical audits. Uh, some investment firms or other companies ask us to go and see how, how people, our companies are doing. And in doing so, uh, We've seen some amazing things and we see what's, what's the average throughput of companies and what people kind of expect. And we can see the gap in between the two. So let me give you uh, the, the good news first. So it's, it's possible to, to do some, some quite amazing things. So we'll start with a, an example from, uh, from one of our own projects. It's a company called DriveScale. It's in San Francisco. Uh, we build for them, built for them a, over the course of 12, 12 months, a, a complete user provisioning, uh, data acquisition, firmware distribution, analytics plat platform that's deployed uh, on Amazon, uh, on the Amazon cloud. Includes APIs, integrations with third parties, multi, and uh, it's uh, multi-tenant, does some IoT, Internet of Things, uh, capture, uh, data capture. It's highly scalable, deployed in multiple region, quite resilient, and, and whatnot. So we, over the, the course of 12 months, we've made over 650 deployments in production without stopping the servers, not a single, there wasn't a single second of downtime. So let's, let's do a new poll. So Edward will ask you, how many developers did you, do you think were involved in building that platform and going through that 12 month project and making 660 deployments uh, over the course of the project. So, I'm looking at the answers. More than half of you answered five people. Some of you said 10. A few think it's 15. And someone thinks it's like a team of 25 people. So, all good answers that could have been true. But the fact is that we were, uh, let me go back to the slide, we, there were two developers. So over the, the course of that, and I, I, <laughs> I kind of lied, it was not 12 months, it was eight months. So over the course of eight months, there was 650 deployments to production, not a single second of downtime, but that's, that's probably because we had over 1,500 automated tests. So you, you see that it's, it's possible to, to, to create value with, with smaller teams. 
but uh, it's it could, it can be difficult. So the uh, if you know Gartner, Gartner has been uh, looking at the uh, the landscape, and they say that. 90% of companies who try to improve their productivity by going agile or adopting DevOps will fail. Uh, so why is that? Why is that that most of people trying to, 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 to change will fail? It's because you're being sold on output, measuring output instead of measuring outcome. Uh, you're being told sometimes that technology uh, will solve everything, that uh, adapting an agile process will, will, uh, will be like magic, and that you don't really need to change your, your own corporate culture to, 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 to change how you do software, and that's just not true. So it takes a bit of everything. Uh, but it surely is not uh, based on working hard and hoping that things will go, uh, go your way. Uh, you cannot gamble. You need to, to, to take the 10 steps to 10 times more pro productivity. So uh, that was kind of the introduction. Let's, uh, let's look at what we think are like 10, 10 ways, 10 options, 10 then angles that you can uh, work on to increase your own team productivity. So any questions, feel free to, to shoot them up. Uh, so let's start. What we see is probably the single most uh, culprit uh, of low productivity is when teams do not think like entrepreneurs, when they, they don't think about the product first, when they, they think about technology. So you've heard of the, the, the concept of an MVP, so that's the minimal viable product. Uh, that's something you need to shoot for, for always, and you need to make your, your team accountable. So here, when I, we start a project, the, a project that may be for us or for one of our customers, what I do ask is that they build the, the initial hello world. And by that I mean, sure, having a screen that says, well, maybe a, a simple login screen and a screen that says hello world, but I want it to be fully tested. So 100% test coverage, I want it to be uh, deployed automatically with no human intervention on a CI continuous integration pipeline. I want to be able to continuously deploy as soon as a developer pushes code into Git. Uh, I want it to, to reach production with no human intervention in less than 20 minutes. Uh, I want the, the deployment to be done in a production-like environment with multiple servers, even deployed in multiple regions. I want to be able to scale my Hello World prototype to millions of users. Uh, and that's like mandatory before we tackle any kind of architecture, uh, uh, design, or even before we code our initial, our first feature. And you, you'll see that that approach dovetails into uh, the, the other uh, steps to being 10 times more agile. Uh, so thinking like entrepreneurs and not engineers, uh, thinking about what you're trying to accomplish and not how you, you're going to do it, do your do the smallest app that you can, that you can, that can provide value to your customers and make every single feature the, the smallest that it can be. So no, no sort on, on this screen, no paging, no, no nothing, but make it work. Uh, and be super critical of the product itself. Try to use it yourself. 
and, and don't rely on QA. Uh, so I'm going to code and push my things to QA and to production or support. Uh, be accountable uh, by being in a, we'll be talking about DevOps a bit later, but uh, be accountable for what you're doing. Second step, just say no. Uh, it's, it's the simplest way you can save time and be more productive. Yeah, but really, if I say no, I, I still, still need to be doing something else. Well, usually you, you'll be able to say no to things that are not really uh, game, game changers or, or that are no, not deal breakers. And you'll have time to work on things that provide a lot more value. You may not expend more hours, but you'll, you'll be providing more value if you say no to those things that are not really important. So thank you. We have our next question. So why, what is before why? Uh, better to know why you do, you're doing something before anything else. That's a, a great question. So we have a, a recent example of that uh, where one of our customers asked for three new reports. So uh, we asked why <laughs> uh, they wanted those reports and was because they, they were trying to, uh, to, to gather some, some metrics and sort of some visibility into their users' usage patterns. But by asking what they were trying to find, we were able to, 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 to find the same information in other reports. So the workaround was to, well, just look at those reports that are titled differently than what you're looking for, but the information is there. So knowing what you're, you're trying to achieve, and then why, and then how you do it, can make sense. But uh, so it's, it's subtle. So, and, and when you, you say yes, then usually 85% of, uh, of the feature is good enough. Having a list string, uh, that stops at, at 50 line items is good enough. If you want to see the past the, the 50 first line items, just refine your search. How often do you go see the next Google page, the, the search result? When often do you go to the next page? Never. You, you look at the first string, you don't find your thing, you, you refine the search. So don't do paging, don't do sorting, don't provide the, the bare minimum, and usually that's good enough. Uh, that being said, uh, asking about why some, some feature is requested and how does it relate to the business model, will have the feature simply disappear. Uh, don't think of doing things that your users are not asking for, and, and say no to unrealistic demands. Number three, the 15 minutes rule. So if you are waiting on someone or something for more than 15 minutes, it's a, a sign that something is broken. So uh, what causes those delays? Usually it's a kind of sequential development pipeline where you have an architecture committee who thinks about the, the, the big picture stuff. Uh, communicates that to the project owner, who then schedule the architects, and you have the architecture uh, design, and then analysts that kind of try, are trying to boil down your your design so that actual developers can code them. Then it gets pushed to QA and then to prod. That takes time. If you take a DevOps approach with full stack developers, which are developers who can do just about anything. You can parallelize a lot of those activities and you forego a lot of the, the communication overhead that's required to manage a team made of different uh, type of workers. Uh, challenge, all approval uh, steps that are required to go through your process. Empower your people. If somebody can make the decision to go to production or to use a, a design, 
just just let them uh, do the, the, the actual decision-making process. Okay, so uh, a, a bit of a, a challenge. So what do these people have in common? So here at the NGNO, uh, we have a, a, a couple of uh, bachelor in political sciences. We have developers who have absolutely no diploma. They're autodidact self-learning. Uh, we have teams with uh, people who have masters in mathematics. We have someone who is really good, but he, he has a Twitch uh, channel where he streams games of chess. We have junior people here with uh, less than a couple of years of experience who are team leaders. We have a, a someone from the military. We have a a, a world that. Uh, someone who is a world champion in drafting, and we have some people who are expert in fish, fishes. Uh, so they're what I, I call originals, and there's a good book called Originals that I, I strongly recommend. So those people have built-in reflexes to challenge everything. They're, so they're not you're, they're not just doing what they're being told, they're not just following a, a recipe, they're challenging how things are done, options that get selected, and that creates a mindset where they, they can say no, where they can find simpler solutions, where they can challenge the, the customer. Number five, uh, so great coders. Uh, I strongly recommend, and here it's mandatory, that coders, developers, go through those four books, uh, Code Complete in, in the order, Code Complete, Clean Code, and Clean Coder, Continuous Delivery, and uh, Growing uh, Software in a Test-Driven uh, Fashion. Having great coders uh, is really brings a lot of value because it's not doesn't take longer to, to write great code. It's super easy. Here we can, when people get integrated in a, in a team, they can learn to, learn to become great coders in, in a few months. So it's not, uh, it's fast to, to bring someone to the proper level of uh, coding uh, because you, you do less errors, you're able to better test, you, you pay a price upfront that saves a lot of money and time down the line. Number six, automation. Uh, that's the foundation of, of continuous delivery. That's the foundation of being able to do test different development. So anything that can be scripted, automated, you have to do it. So that means your tests, that means your deployments. That mean your that means your infrastructure provisioning. Uh, it removes human errors. Uh, it removes uh, uh, documentation because the script is act or the tests are the actual documentation. So automation. Uh, I did a, a quick bit of math and and writing a test takes thirty minutes. Doing the same test manually takes two minutes, but if you do that every single day, you'll be saving a complete day by the end of the year. So just write a lot of tests. Automate everything. Uh, then quality. Uh, going back to my initial example about drive scale, we've uh, created a, an app, a platform really that has covers hundreds of user stories. Uh, we've made more than five releases per day over the eight month period. We never add a single second of downtime. And it's not because we're good, it's because we, we follow a proven process. And over that time, the customer reported only 10 minor bugs. So not crashes, not, not just smaller things, but so imagine, guess the, the amount of time that we saved 
talking to the customers, managing it, it, the expectations, fixing the bugs and finding what the bug wa was and then fixing it. So building quality from day one at every step of your process is a, an investment that will pay for itself. Uh, fixing things early, studies show that it's 100 times cheaper to fix something early than late. Uh, by being test driven really influences your design. So your, your APIs, your design, everything's gonna be better because you're thinking in a test driven uh, type of fashion. And your test, are, are your actual documentation. So you're not doing documentation about the, the features, you're, you're saving across the board. Okay, the, the, the biggest single most important topic is that of continuous deployment. So a, a quick, a, a really interesting story is that recently, because we're using Firebase, and I'll be talking about Firebase in a few minutes, uh, we, we had some issues over a, a, a number of days, we had some issues and then by investigating the problem, we, we found out that it was really Google who was the culprit. So we, we were, and as you know, Firebase is something that's become quite popular. It's a backend of a, as a service, a serverless type of platform. Uh, hundreds and thousands of companies uh, do use it. And we were the first one to report the issue to Google. And we even outlined maybe the line in their SDK that was causing the problem. And then over the weekend, because we were able to redeploy to change, Google would suggest changes uh, to instrument the, the app to better understand the problem. We were able to implement those changes, changes and redeploy to production within 15 minutes while running thousands of unit tests. Okay, a question, what is continuous deployment? It's the ability to deploy your app to production continuously and really, really fast. So being able to deploy to, productions five, to production five times a day uh, is continuous deployment. So by being reactive and being fast enough to, to, to provide answers and feedback to Google, we've, we've, we're able to work with them over the weekend and then uh, have them fix the issue and, and they, they, they were kind to us. They said that we were kind of instrumental in them being able to, to, to find the, the problem and fix it. That's just because we were able to, to deploy so fast. So, but the biggest payback is that continuous deployment allows you to not do things, things that usually you think are, are mandatory in a, in a project. You, you just forego them and, and save time that you, is better invested in to creating value. So, when you deploy continuously, and I won't be getting into too much details, but we most never here write any documentation. Customers do not provide us with, with requirements document or detailed feature designs. We just iterate with them on a daily basis. We do not provide our customers with, with any kind of detailed planning. We, we just go in a generic direction. We know of some milestones that they need to meet because of customers or such, but uh, you don't almost do any planning. Uh, errors are so easy to fix because you're, 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 you have thousands of tests that help you uh, pinpoint errors and fixing, fixing them. We, we're DevOps, so we, we have things that are fully autonomous and take care of developing, but of quality and deploying to production. So we don't have the need to, to interact with a production team with, by filing tickets and waiting on people. There is no customer approval phase where they, they stand what we, we've delivered over a 
big kind of approval process because they're approving what we built every single morning. Uh, there's no customer training like with Gmail. You you don't. They're deploying a feature to Gmail every single day, so you're not required to to go to training. Then technology, I'll be concluding with uh, a few more items uh, and then taking your questions. Uh, we're really in love with Firebase. So Firebase is a kind of abstraction layer over the Google Cloud services that makes it really, really easy to build uh, scalable and secure applications. So Firebase is mostly a backend of a, as a service where you we do not know of any dump managed service. You deploy functions, and Google takes care of scaling them and execute them, them, executing them when needed. Uh, as a great integration with any type of front end development, be that in a web browser or in a mobile app, takes care of all the user management stuff, logins, takes care of scalability, takes care of building an offline first app, uh, provides all the tooling to, to do some analytics and understand what you're doing and uh, the, your user behavior. So things that just a few years ago we were coding ourselves on our commodities and, and it's almost free. So check out Firebase. Uh, so make sure that you, you pick technology that makes it that every single line of code that you, you write is about your business model or your, your domain. If you're writing about managing users, uh, logins or navigations, it's a bit of a wasted time because now platforms and frameworks provide all that free of charge. So ask yourself, if I'm currently writing code that does not directly translate into a, a, a business feature or provides business value to your customers. Ask yourself if some type of technology like Firebase cannot be uh, of help. And then uh, public clouds, Google, uh, we do deploy on, mostly on Amazon uh, and then on Google. Uh, we don't use Azure, uh, I'm sure it's pretty good. Uh, but people sometimes think that the cloud is about servers and it's not. It's about services that provide you with so much commodities and, and power that uh, you're left sometimes uh, thinking that, well, I don't have to code anything. Well, it's <laughs> sometimes it's true. Uh, you, you, you have to just look at the, the number of services that Amazon provides and, and you start to understand that, oh my God, it's not just serves, it's, it's a lot of things that are now commodities and that includes AI. So we've in, inserted some type of AI in, in many apps recently with just a few lines of codes. Uh, so make sure that you know of those available services. There exist great uh, certifications. Uh, I know that we've done a few of them on Cloud Guru, uh, where you just learn, you get an overview of all those services and then you have the, the reflexes to pick and choose those technologies that can accelerate your development instead of yourself reinventing the wheel. The wheel. Uh, and people will, I, I'll, I'll say that people will say, well, but it's, it's so much, it's, it's, it would, it's cheaper for us to have our own servers, but you're comparing apples to oranges. You, you, Amazon provides you with security, with certifications, with services, with and just with innovation that you don't have to manage. So I haven't seen uh, really recently any business case where having your own infrastructure and servers uh, makes sense. But again, I'm not in, in all domains, so I'm sure there are some, some use cases that where it makes sense. But so 
Okay. In conclusion, uh, if you need to, to take something away from our talk, is that it's hard to do, but it's really possible to, to optimize people that you already uh, have uh, instead of hiring new people. So think about culture, think about execution, and think about technologies, and get a, a good mix of those three. Uh, invest in talent. Uh, as I said, a good developer may be 10 to 20 times better and provide more value than an average developer. So better pay someone twice the salary, but get 10 times more pr productivity. Make sure that people are free to execute, make them autonomous and accountable for what they're doing. Use a modern uh, culture of software development. So be clean, become clean coders, use TDD, invest in continuous integration and continuous deployment, use the right technologies, use the cloud. And, and just maybe you, you'll find that you don't need to hire new people. So with that said, thank you for bearing with me. Uh, almost everyone stayed the course, so that's, that's great. Uh, we do we have some questions. I, I think we have some. So people are asking, uh, someone is asking, on an average project, how often do you deploy to production? Uh, no, that's not a question, that's a poll, I'm sorry. Uh, so Edouard just sent you a, a poll. So uh, the question is, on your last project, how often do you push uh, a new release to production? And we'll be sharing those, uh, those results. Uh, I see that uh, we don't have any questions at the moment and the results are coming in. So what I have here is uh, a few people, well, a third of the of you push less, uh, well, deploy less than once a month. Uh, another quarter deploys every month and then we have a few people deploy every week or every day. And we have two people who deploy many times a day. That's great. Uh, so if I, I was to look back at what we, we do here and what had the most impact on our ability to, to deploy, to create software for our customers at, at a price that is fair and, and provide value and have customers really glad to be working with us because it's continuous delivery. But it's, there needs to, to there need, things need to, to happen before, before we, you get continuous delivery. So invest in, in being great coders, in coding, test, testing, automated, automation, technologies, and then work your way up to continuous delivery. So, uh, Another question, uh, but, uh, um, they are telling me, okay, I have the question here. So did you apply this approach to an already existing project? What a great question. Yeah, uh, I would say that a third of the times we are asked to, to take over uh, legacy software and, and try and evolve the, the the platform or the app. So we, people tell me with, and they're right, that it's, it's really something that's hard to do. So what we do is that we, we leave the legacy stuff uh, on the side and gradually we just carve out individual functionalities from that, that monolith quite often and, and start again from scratch, applying everything that we've just dis discussed. And, and you, you, you do that gradually, and then the, the, the old piece of software will, will just fade away and you'll be left with something new. Because it's, it's frankly, it's, uh, it's, 
almost impossible to take a, an old piece of software that's 15 years old and it's uh, still working, but it's really, really hard to apply uh, TDD and, and uh, continuous delivery to, to something that was not built from the ground up to, to support the approach. Uh, so, uh, as Edouard is saying, uh, don't be shy. Okay, we have a, if you, you have questions and you want to ask them privately, uh, just send them my way. You, you have my email or you can go and read. Uh, most of what we, we've just discussed is posted on LinkedIn as short articles. You have the, the, the URL on the last slide. Uh, I still have 15 more minutes, so, so if you have questions, I see that people are starting to leave, but if you have any more questions, we'll be more happy to take them. I want to, uh, frankly, uh, uh, we, I didn't thought that there would be so many people, so we're really, really glad to, to have been able to share uh, what we've been doing here. Uh, if you, you want to discuss specific topics, just uh, call me and we'll, we'll have coffee and, and talk about your, your own part of the world. So thank you again very much. And we'll try to, to make another webinar soon enough. Thank you again. Bye-bye.